Welcome back to Ultralight. My name is Wes Sherwin. I got my boy, uh, Original Fani. Uh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm in the right spot. I'm you in the right spot? Dude, just get comfortable, man. You, you, you want to move that chair that's next to you, or do you like it for your bag? Um, here, let, yeah. I'm going to put this one here. We're starting this podcast off real normal, everybody. We in here moving chairs, just doing what we want, man. This is real life. Real life, real people, real conversations. Fuck Papa John's. Yeah. I should change my tag to fuck Papa John's at the end. Because, like, you know how, like, they're, like, they're like quote or whatever is like real 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 pieces real places what is it what is papa john's i don't know anyways fuck it how are you man i'm good bro how are you welcome i'm tired a little tired but in overtime yeah yeah, yeah. you worked in double way. time yeah triple because what are triple you getting ready double. for tonight tonight i'm getting ready for um Sa nudie lucky x got a show here so we're pumping out a little collab i haven't even really had the chance to talk about it but I think that's cool sometimes because I'm going to just roll it out as it happens, you know what I mean? And you, and you just see how it does that way, too. Like, you see organically kind of how, like, the people fuck with it. That's very true. I mean, I had did a pop-up um, in D.C. a couple weeks ago on short notice, and it almost did. It was comparable to the pop-up I did with, like, a month's notice, you know what I mean? Right. In the city I'd never been to before, so. Well, I think that that, that shows you how much value your name carries. Yeah. Um, I mean, the name Fani, the name original Fani has taken years to grow to where it is today. Definitely. Um, and I mean, in the beginning days, you know, you were doing mixtape covers. Yeah. Um, when you were doing mixtape covers, did you have an idea that like, I'm going to have this, this lifestyle brand? Because it's not even just fashion. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't. Um, when I was doing mixtape covers, I thought I would just continue to climb the ladder as like a graphic designer. Um, and hopefully be doing graphics for like someone a huge artist one day um i mean i'm really happy like things kind of turned out like to something like i'm more in control of you know what i mean mm. um and then i can kind of like get um the respect and the notoriety for like the work i'm doing yeah um pull that mic a little closer outside of like the work other people are doing or like how I'm working for other people. That's cool too, though. I mean, it's like the conversation about like videographers, right? Like, videographers see their they they see the the fruit that they put out through other people's work, yeah. whether it's someone else's song or it's someone's photo shoot that they took a picture of. But the other person gets the accolades for. Right. I think that for you, you have been in some of the strongest, if not the strongest circles in Atlanta mm. and you figured out how to not get lost in the sauce with those people you know it's like you're fine like yeah. you have your own thing you do what you do and and that really carries man I mean in the beginning days of creation like were you always creating growing up like were you always making stuff no I do feel like I always was making stuff um it was just like different mediums I guess you could say um but all up into high school I was pretty much just drawing uh, what kind of stuff I, did you draw, like anime? Of course I drew anime, um, but I really got into graffiti a little later, um, like in junior high, junior year, just, you know, tagging stuff. And then it's relation to hip hop and like Mark Echo. I was just big on that whole, like the whole idea mm. you know, of art and music being like intertwined together. Because I guess, w was there never a time for you where you were like, where you thought about making music, where you were like, I'm going to, since all my friends. No, nah, I mean, me and my friends, we trolled and made stuff, you know what I mean? But a lot of my friends, too, were like, seriously talented, like, you know what I mean? Real musicians. And yeah, I'm one of those people who, like, I hate to step on people's toes. Like, if you're, like, awesome and you can do something better than I can, like, well, let me figure out how I can, like, add you know my taste the uh, you know my ideas to what you can do you know and how do you and how do you tell kids that are coming up these days with so much oversaturation of art and 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 product to find what your thing is to find out like because you you have a pretty clear uh, aesthetic, if that's the right word, of like who Fani is, like yeah. because I think too many kids are biting off of. Well, yeah, I think that's interesting too these days, because I mean, like the Instagram, it's like it's the gift sometimes and the curse, because I mean numbers are real, but then you know, 
timing and the algorithm and you know the motions that come from you know the numbers that you see you know aren't always real and aren't always true you do know you I mean? think that the kanye west idea of taking away follower numbers and like counts is smart for the future of humanity i mean yeah i understand what he was saying it kind of like evens the playing field um on just art and you know who's doing what because again people do use these numbers to kind of like first it's quantify but then it's also now to qualify you know whatever they're looking at you know from one post to the next you know and that's not necessarily fair and that's not really a, a true measure of like quality you know what right a hundred percent it's just it's right at that point it's quantity it's yeah. this many people look at your thing thus it might be good right which is not always true exactly um like this like and i'm not talking shit but like the supreme patty thing of like i'm gonna squeeze these lemons in my eyes uh. for the hope that this shit will blow me up and i think he woke up one day probably and was like oh man my voice is so distorted that i can't really be positive like it's hard for me to then mm. come out and say like because he can do a thanksgiving turkey giveaway yeah but then people see that as a he's only doing that to do this and so it's so important nowadays and that's kind of what i'm figuring out in this podcast is is my voice yeah is that it's so important initially when you come into this game of what your voice is and your intentions um i mean you know so we met years ago 2012 2013 i was shooting photos um i remember pulling up on you at like dtp and at starbucks and da 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 da, da. and i and i could be wrong but I, I think that you even knew back then that, like, that wasn't my lane. And and I just remember sitting at, at coffee shops with you talking about how, like, dude, I want to do this and I want to do these things in life. And I think you – because you had already done enough that you had seen, like, dude, it's just going to take time. Like, it, shouldn't, it just takes time yeah. to really find who you are. Yeah. Um, and in an industry with so much fake stuff, I mean – how do you keep your humanity in this? Like, how do you, as you go to this thing tonight, as you go to this event tonight, how do you not do or do you? Is there value in being business minded 100% of these events? Like, I mean, there is. I mean, it, me for me, it's like I'm not the most business oriented person. I know that, but I'm like very social and, um, you know, I'm very humble as well. So has that not jaded you? Has like the has the humility? I mean, it can, it can. But I mean, I think what I've learned in the last two years is like to really like focus on like people who, you know, like help me out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. In whatever way. You know what I mean? So like the show tonight, I'm going to tonight. I mean, the management, I'm friends with management, I'm friends with artists. Um, you know what I mean? I'm friends with the promo. You know what I mean? It's like I'm I'm doing a collab with, you know, both Milk and Cookies and Sa. So it's just like, you know, it makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Versus like there's a couple shows that just passed the city that, you know, I just want, I kind of wanted to check out, but I just fell back on because it was just like, man, I'm focused on some other stuff. You know what I mean? And then I got, you know, a, a pop up this Friday um, through Sunday, you know, mm -hmm. and then the online release on Monday. So like with that being like the focus is just like you know i'm just trying to work with people who work with me who represent my brand well like who are down to like collaborate and stuff like that yeah a hundred percent because we bring each other up you know and that's how i like it's like honestly like starting out that's how i started out and then like then i was like well i can't just be like that you know i gotta spread out i gotta you know, mess with a little bit of everybody, you know, I gotta be, you know, to myself, but, you know, not afraid to, to branch out, branch out, you know, and I did that for a long time. And then now I, I feel like now that I've done that, I'm back to the point where it's like, okay, now I need to close it back in to like, you know, tighten it and these people, you know, cause that's, that's all it's about. Now I kind of did the like groundwork. Cause your inner circle has always been pretty tight. Yeah, I um, mean it's it's changed, you know what I mean? But sure. um, you know, again to But I a always lot of still see help Siege. Me. Yeah, of like course. I see Siege on your Instagram all the time. Of course, and Kurt, Siege is like Key. 
support these are people who support my brand like you know since did you know jump. i got a 777 tattoo i didn't yeah that's hard right yeah there. man i do that album was like the, it was the greatest album of the year that's hard we um, need a picture of that yeah i got you that bro it changed my life um so like as and far we as probably could set one of these up with key too you know i would I love think to I, I, I hollered at you about that but you gotta mention that yeah well i saw key at mother um a couple months ago yeah. and key the the me and key stories i shot the recoup video and mm. uh he the when i first got there uh I, I was just an idiot and i was reading his instagram handle and i was like fat manky i was like what the mm. fuck is a f <laughs> bro he clowned me for the yeah. next couple hours but um yeah that's pretty funny so as far as let's go back to you though as far as like fonny and original fonny um, do you have an idea of like the legacy, what you want it to look like? Or is that something that you're so focused on today that it's like, I can't even worry about what this brand looks like? Oh, yeah. I mean, I definitely, uh, that was another thing about it. And just like in trying to collaborate and spread the brand out to a lot of places, I was just like, I was focused on that. Like I had like goals kind of shaped around like the areas I wanted to be in based off the brands I collabed with and you know, I'm and just to name to a few, point. like felt. Yeah, felt extra large carrots, Joe, fresh goods. Um, you know, wish. But now, like now that I've done that, like, like, you know, it wasn't that long. It's kind of been like in the last three years that all of those things happened. And now that I've done those things, I think like I have to when I compare myself to other people, I got got to think about like the lack of things that I've done, you know what mm. I mean? And like things I've done for myself and that the lack of things that like I've done with my brand that potentially I can do now. And it's kind of like already has that behind it, you know, whatever I was trying to create. It's like you've built a foundation to the, the foundation is there where now I feel comfortable. You can start adding bedrooms. You can start bedroom, you know, or renovating like hood, the bathroom, you know what I mean? Or like a beanie, like, you know what I mean? Other <laughs> things like beanie. That I wear a lot, you know what I mean? But I just, I've been sticking to like one thing to like get that to the point where it's like, okay, that's super special. And right. I can focus on like something else because know? it's about moments. Like, I think that that's the thing that, that a lot of artists forget and and you know I, I fuck with Gary Vee but he talks about you know put something out every day because one of it's going to hit but then what you do is you take away the opportunity to have a moment with people mm. and what you did with the Fandana is you provided a moment you provided a moment in a time where you know it's so cool nowadays to be stacking on Instagram and to be throwing up gang signs and be doing whatever you want because it's clouded Mm. But you took away, you did, this is what you did. And I don't know if you've even thought about this. Kanye West's goal, and I don't know if I fuck with what he's doing, da da da. I think he totally fucked it up. But his whole thing with the Make America Great Again hat was to repurpose it. Mm. Was to, but with the Fandana, like for people like me and my friend Miles and, and my close friends who have no reason to be gang affiliated, I can wear a red Fandana and not feel like I'm out here front mm. and that's what you've done mm. How, do you think about that i mean I, I think about that um i mean i definitely like color coded it in a way like you know that it could be thought about the opposite way too sure like, you know what i mean like um real bloods can really wear that stuff i mean and it's just like but again i don't have any gang affiliation so like you know going into it no that wasn't the thing you know going right. into it the thing was just like a lot of japanese brands i like had bandanas which they present in a way that they're not cheap you know what i mean they, mm. you know that it's not about it just being like a little cheap accessory that you can find anywhere it's more about it being special accessory that you can't find everywhere that changes over time and you know that's where the idea came from. But that then, again, ties into Western culture from mm. cowboys to gangs. Right. You know. Exactly. They would. They didn't have, you know, North Face masks to put on. They had to put a, a bandana around their face. Right. Um, and, yeah, man, I mean, I think that it's just – it's smart. I think it's smart what you did. Um, and it's But it's gone not just from bandanas. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I'm on Instagram and see a girl laying on a bandana pillow, like a, a throw pillow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean the the print itself. 
Yeah. Um, so when you're designing these things and you're going through the process, do you reach out to OGs of yours to say like, Hey, what do you think of this? Or is it always I, pretty I much like a group of like my friends, um, who I've had for a long time who like, I know they like the same brands I do. And you know, I know they're going to tell me if it's whack or not whack. Yeah. But that's the whole thing is one thing I like not to sound brash, but like, I know what whack looks like, so I don't really do that a lot. You know what I mean? I know what, like, is just widely accepted for, like, dumb reasons. You know what I mean? I know what abstract is, where, again, too, with, like, abstract things, I'm not the most abstract thinker. So, you know, I definitely try to get help and ask people for, like, ideas about, like, things like that are a little bit more avant-garde, you know? But I am, like, a a student you know mm. and so for the for the other students listening to this for the young kids that are listening to this that are like well how am i going to get to where fani got um what initially do you suggest these kids to do when they're creating their brands and starting their instagram pages is it make sure that they know who they are because i think that unless you know who you are your brand is going to to not it won't have longevity um, would you agree with that? Say that one more time. I'm like sorry. for the, for the young kids, like for the kids listening to this. Yeah. Um, what is your advice to when they're starting out in 2018 with a hundred other brands on Instagram and they want to, they want to, well, you can't look at the brands on a hundred other brands. You can't look at like, I don't, I never like, I look at other brands, but like, they're all like above me. You know what I mean? Mm. I don't look at like, I don't look at stuff as like competition though. You know Would what you mean? ever, would you ever do something uh, like what Virgil's done with Louis, like, could you see yourself creative directing a a brand? I mean, it's like it, that was one of the interesting things too. What Kanye was saying in this like two hour inf- interview, because you know he was just like, you know, people gotta feed their family, which is like, when you say that, it's kind of like a jab, like, I guess you know what I mean, like, right, um, like the politics behind like high fashion brands and the fashion houses like i understand history and i understand you know what can be upkept and traditions can be you know looked at as what kind of traditions are you talking about like what kind of i'm talking about like i don't i guess it's not ancient but you know old european you know traditions which you know and family and the hierarchy of the world which is also tied into these brands you know what i'm saying 100%. so i i never really you know saw myself or see myself you know doing something like that because you know to me like you know what i'm doing is it's not just as powerful but in the way it is you know what i mean for like well, I think it is as powerful. You know I think, what I mean? I think like, it is. I think that, you know, I, I, I we were walking to the gas I just station. don't like to sound like, you know, like that. But but it's egotistical, a- you know what I mean? Because it is, you know, Louis Vuitton, you know what I mean? But at the same time, it's just like. But that's what's so funny is that you have done enough now where I think you can be proud. And I think. Oh, yeah. That- I mean, I am proud. You know what I mean? I'm just still not going to like one thing that someone else told me about. It was my son. And he told me like, Yo, you don't. You're not that guy who like shouts like, oh, I'm blah, 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 blah. You just let the work show, you know? A hundred percent. And then, again, like I have a lot more work to do, you know what I mean? Absolutely. So like, again, I understand like history being tied to brands and stuff like that. But, you know, no, no, I, I haven't seen myself like being a creative director for. It's why know, it's why Montclair, house. it's why Montclair puts these uh, like for their ads, they put like these white families and whatever but the people who are really buying montclair are not those people Mm. and so that's like what do you think about that like do you see that changing one day um i mean that is again i think that's an interesting part of the manipulation and the control of you know you know society you know what i'm saying like do you be- how much do you believe though that we're being manipulated and controlled i mean at some point I mean, you, you have got to, to though i mean like that's part of marketing and branding too you know what i mean so like again you know i don't want to sound manipulative but there's strategies and formulas put into my work you know what i mean of course so again but i'm saying i gotta on a respect scale like even know? outside of fashion like even it's just human sitting here like 
I have had so many conversations now at this table about like programming and how, you know, we're meant to believe to be anxious and how we're made to be stressed and sickness is something that we've created for ourselves. Mm. Um, I mean, do you believe that? Do you believe that? Yeah, definitely. I mean, those things are definitely true. And so how much value do you put in it, though? Because the more you think about stuff like that, the less happy you are. It is. So, I mean, I don't like I, I, I dwell in like my work and the next thing I have going on. Like where Almost are you at? too much sometimes because, you know, you definitely got to go back and make sure things are like <laughs> where they need to be. <laughs> yeah. But what were you going to say? Um, like where are you at with like uh, we did a podcast before this, uh, yeah. but where are you at with the flat earth thing? I mean, I'm not. Uh, are you still skeptical? Yeah, very. Like I don't. there's nothing that has happened since then to make me think otherwise. Like. I, there's nothing. I've had a conversation with one of my good friends in New York about it, and we found that we had like a mutual view on it. Maybe that it's not as flat as this table, of course, but you know, I'm still like on the snow globe. I still think we live on the snow globe. But see, know? I think, th- but and I, I don't, I don't like. Again, I haven't seen any like proof of anything otherwise since then. I've I've continued to see more and more. If I was to look in it more and more like you know evidence of the truth you know if you want to go so do you believe in. that like we landed on the moon like no there's no there's no moon they like they just talked about going to the moon again recently you know what i mean like but they you know they'll say it's the first time because you know people are worried about cardi b so you know what i'm saying like, right they can just tell you yeah this is the first time we're going to the moon and majority of people they're just going to be like and I thought we went, but whatever. Like, I guess. And Maybe then, that was weird how we went. I don't know what happened. I don't, I don't care because, you know, it, it doesn't have nothing to do with my rent. At the end of the day, rent. you got you to eat today. Yeah. Right. Like, unless unless they're talking about, like, the end of the world and we got to go somewhere, right. man, I got to figure out how to get this podcast by. I mean, too, I, I think, too, that's a part of it, too, just like, I mean, because the planet, the planet's pretty fucked. You know what I mean? It uh-huh. is. So I think that's another like kind of thing like yeah you know we can get out of here we can go here like no you can't so outside you and need and to I to fucking start thinking about global warming and stuff like that which I mean we're between us and China you know we're like the highest contributors oh pollution to the problem right um but you know China where I'm thinking about producing stuff and here where I produce stuff now you know what I mean like mm. but it's just like. So that uh, again, I'm not aiding the problem. You know, what I'm saying in the in the grand scheme, you know. I don't think it's about aiding it. I think it's that the problem has got. It's like you can't put a genie back in the bottle. Like the problem has gotten so big that at some point you kind of have to eat one or two punches and say, "Listen, listen, is- I'm not like Miami's going to be underwater." Like that's <laughs> what you got to say, right? Bro, like California's California going to be on, is fire. on fire, you know, from a campfire. You know that it was just two kids sitting around a campfire. I did not know that. Yeah, so the story is that there was just two kids sitting around a campfire, super dry, and they forgot to ash out their fire, and that fire burned down. It killed seventy nine people so far. That fire, which is that's so that's so interesting because you know you you start a fire, and you leave that bitch right. Like, that shit's gonna go out. Hopefully, you know, it's it's going to rain something, you know, it's right. just not going to it's definitely not going to catch this whole forest <laughs> on fire. You know what I mean? Right. And come on. That's Those crazy. kids were not thinking I'm going to kill. Thought, I would have dipped. I might have dipped on the fire. Oh. I might not have put the fire out. That's what I'm I'm, I'm oh, yeah, being honest yeah, yeah, right yeah. now. I could have caused that because I wouldn't have thought like, you know, but I don't know what part of the dry ass woods they were in. Right. Around. Nature is so crazy. You know what I'm saying? They're around like sticks and like every Bro. every tree is like you know what I'm saying? They're in Hollow. bear they're in bear country. Like they're not in their side of the woods. There's like, nothing green where it's gonna go out. That shit just caught on fire immediately. Yeah, bro. Like, what can you do? And That's so crazy. And so you're right. And like, who starts campfires right now? Like Dumb people. Well, I, <laughs> I remember. I remember growing up. People used to have like bonfires with trash. Yeah, and it was like huge. And I would just remember being like, "Why are we doing this?" Wait, so the bonfire? <laughs> so like down Cali? Yes. Yeah. Come on. It was a not even a bonfire. Dirty. 
Not even a bonfire. Dirty. Somebody get dirty, man. Man, I'm telling you. I'm Straight telling up. you. And, you know, the next thing is going to be that these hurricanes, Trump did these hurricanes, man. I'm telling you. That's going to come out, bro. I have opinions about Trump made about the this, hurricane. Man. Trump made the hurricane, bro. I don't know about that one. <laughs> no, I'm talking shit. I probably shouldn't okay. be saying that kind of I mean, of shit. but it is what it is. I don't know about that one. It Trump, is what it Trump is. Trump making hurricanes. I don't know. Trump. <laughs> Hey, there's some popular culture news that's relevant right now. Trying to get people off his back. Like, <laughs> Shit, believe me, bro. Alone. This is what's gonna. This is what Trump's gonna do at the end of his election. I'm. I'm. I will put this quarter on this right now. Mm. Trump is gonna federally legalize weed, and got to. And people are gonna be like. <laughs> Shit, man, I don't know, bro. Shit's all right. Yeah, shit. I ain't really. <laughs> I'm gonna smoke the gas, but shit, I ain't vote for that motherfucker, man. Yeah, man, that's crazy. That Go vote cr- too. I voted. I voted too, man. And you know what? She's suing. You know, she's suing Stacey Abrams. Yeah, she's suing uh, the state of Georgia mm. um, because you know they were they were power cords that were missing. So she's gonna get a check, but not the position. Well. She's not going to get a check. She's going to get change. She's going to actually change voting in Georgia. Um, because right now it's to a place where it's so controlled uh, that people were literally forgetting to, like, take power cords to these places to plug in voting machines. Mm. And so there were 75 people standing outside of a line. Real joke. And, like, yo, we can't vote right now. And so there's so – that's why she went with all these ab- absentee ballots and all this stuff to get it fixed and figured out. Um, but more in pop culture news though, and I don't know how much I want to dwell on this crazy shit. But what about six nine? Man, look, you know I haven't spent. I've been in jail three times. I have never spent like a long time in there, but I spent some Enough. hours in there. Enough. I spent a day in there. Yeah. And that shit's trash. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I was institutionalized. A lot of for people nine say days. he had to come into him and all this, but I mean it's funny, like over time, you know, he first came out, I didn't really I wasn't a fan at all. But over time I was like, you know, his logics, his his the way he was doing on the Instagram and, you know, creating his stunts and making me laugh he's really good at that you know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? so, bro, he was making me laugh laugh know, i don't want to see the guy go to jail no for some guns that i mean they hit him probably, with rico you know what i mean yeah and they hit him with rico he he very ugly. well could have you know not I mean? done the shit that he's getting charged with but like, he's come still on he had put bobby Smurda on the song but you know that had a lot to do with a lot of a whole lot of a whole lot of gang shit i guess you know you want to hear a crazy fact this is is today the 21st? Yeah. Gummo came out a year ago today. Mm. A year ago today, Gummo came out. Yeah, I mean, you know what else I don't like, too, about it, too? I don't like the way, like, I just saw a video. God, will you miss 6 9 But then I saw, like, probably, like, two to three media Twitters or Instagram just retweeting it, posting the video. It's like, shit sucks, man, to be honest. People be so thirsty for, like, anything you know what i mean and not well it's like you know he you told know? the he told the uh the court he said i'll give you all of my bank account if you let me press if you let me uh get bail yeah it was 1.7 million yeah and even that too i'm like i mean what like i feel him yeah no i mean i mean i feel that but i'm just like i didn't i never even heard of that i didn't i like he'll give him the whole that it's not it's not about that like <laughs> no right you have to pay for so these I don't charges even know. I, Where's the video? We see. I seen the video of Thug. So when I see the video of him saying that, I'll believe it. Cause you know people just add stuff to right. stories these days. And that's the trick, man. Is like with all this. And in- some people are saying too. I've seen a lot of people saying this. A, this an album stunt. You know what I mean? Of course not. I don't think so. Of course it isn't. This is nothing to play with. This is nothing to play with. Yeah, you don't fuck with this kind of shit. Yeah. Um. I mean, I hope the best for him, man. I hope that he he finds. He's twenty two. You know what I mean? Like that's young, young. But yeah, on the other thing, I mean, on the other side, they were saying, I mean, yeah, he got a lot of people in jail who who probably don't like him like that. Hell no, so, yeah, no fucking know, bro. Again, you know, he went his way about things. You know, I watched. You know, he troll. He's a great troll, platinum troll, whatever. But hey, like at you, the same time, you know, when you when you are like putting certain energy out in the world, you reap man, what you sow. You do, so. 
and and you know, even me, you know, still we still have the sympathy and just feel, but you know, as people, a, everyone's seen it coming. You as know an I mean? adult, people as were wishing this on him, and you know that's another thing which is is scary to play with. You should never wish demise on anybody. At no point should you be sitting in a room and hope that someone does poorly. Um, I think you have too much to focus on yourself. I think you have to focus too much on how good you're doing and waking up and being a better person every day. Um, are you a person of routine? Like, do you, when you get up in the morning, do you have like a routine or is it just kind of, man, I had one too. I'll say that much, man, but I'm, I'm kind of like, I've gotten away from routines. Um, 2019, I, I know I'm gonna have a, a smooth little reset. Cause I'm, I mean, I just, I've been kind of like scrambling to do my next thing, but it's taken a long time. But, um, how do you reset? How, like personally, like what is your way to recharge your batteries? I mean, just slow down. You know what I mean? You know, slow down. Have some conversations. Like for me, it's like for Don't me, I go have to, out. <laughs> okay, yeah. so it's not like going to the mountains. Like you're not the kind of person that you need six days in the wilderness to to reset. It's not, but I mean that would be dope too. That's not a bad idea. I'd probably get some good photos out there. I got uh I got two places that I can really recommend you and send you, mm. um because dude, there's nothing like being in the middle of a valley and realizing how small you are mm-hmm. and realizing like oh man like these blades of grass have been here for 50 years and 60 years and they haven't complained once yeah and and it's funny too like because you know like i we, i did travel i traveled a lot when i was young you know what i mean my grandparents took me i've been to jackson hole it, it, it was so crazy when the kanye wyoming thing happened because it was just like Damn, I've been there, but I was like a little kid, you know. What yeah, I mean? yeah, but yeah. It's like that's where, you know, rich white people or rich families <laughs> right. go to kick it, and my grandparents took me there, and it was beautiful. And I, I was like eight or something when that happened. And and even when you're eight and out there, do you need to grab that? I don't know. Okay, and even when you're out there, like you can't even at the age of eight, you don't know what you're looking at. And so I think it'd be beautiful, dude, for you to go back and for sure. and to, to Went see to it again. Went to the Grand Canyon and stuff like that. And then, you know, my mom took me overseas. Like, I spent eight months in Kenya. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah, different stints over there. Because your mom was a, your mom's a teacher, right? Art historian. And, and so growing up, like, were you always, um, like, hip on the hit like our history and stuff like that or did she kind of leave that at work and and y'all had y'all's relationship um no nah, i mean she would talk to me about stuff um because i Pull was into the you. arts yeah i was in the art so she would talk to me about art stuff um you know because i mean it just it just came like that together you know what i mean like you know i'm drawing did you have her as a teacher me. or no 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 because she taught she taught in college okay, okay, okay um like art history you don't you know you don't get to that until later you know then when she was teaching she was teaching at spellman and that's interesting too i I definitely thought it like in high school you know you have certain kids whose parents were at the school and stuff right no i i never i never experienced that. what kind of student were you a c student yeah <laughs> <laughs> same dude the teacher likes me so they're gonna make sure i pass because i'm humble you know what i mean right a hundred percent straight up and know? it's not like you didn't you couldn't do the work like me it's just that it wasn't interesting um i mean certain stuff like i'm say like I'm not the biggest math person science history what do you think I'm about nice there what you do you know? think about the education system how it is now i think it's out there i don't fucking know what it is now to be well, honest and i mean it's I, it's hard to it's hard to it's hard to imagine like what it would be like i could only ask my little brother right here you know Cause I we got Lonnie sitting in the back. I have yeah, I have like I already like I feel like you know I was a nerd, so being a nerd, you get ADHD early, you know. What oh I mean? yeah, yeah. So I was already all over the what place. What was your like? And then like you know, I find too like again like shit ain't set up right. Like how do you put? I went to Tri Cities High School, South Side of Atlanta, Georgia. It ain't, you know, it's not a preppy school. Although we had an art magnet program that I was in, you know, we had some hood kids there too, you know what I mean? Like, for sure. And how do you put a vending machine with high fructose corn syrup, Sprite, Coke. Sugar, sugar, sugar. You know, Dr. Pepper. 
on every hallway. You and know ex- what I'm saying? And, expect- and then water. Right, maybe like tea. But that might be a little more expensive. They might charge 129 for the water and it's really 89 cents for the coke. Um I, I don't really really remember that. But it's just like, you know, you're wired, you know what I'm saying? So these days, you know, if you're wired hey, I don't know. You take know, a deep on breath. The gram, you know what I mean? It's like they these these they expect these kids to be calm in their classrooms. But they're for real getting doped up on high fructose corn syrup. Right, right. right. <laughs> like really turning doped these kids into sugar Doped up on that. Doped up junkies. on Lil Uzi Vert. Doped up on Juice World. Doped up on... Bro. Everything. So, you know, I don't know. So, what do you think about uh, that Juice them. World? What do you think about that Juice World um, lawsuit right now that's with uh, over the song? I don't know about it. You don't even know about it? Nah. What uh, is do it? you know about it? Yeah. Who Who's it with? Who's the lawsuit with? I know it just fucked me up too. Anyway, so Juice World's uh, "Lucid Dream" song uh, is getting eighty-five percent of its profits taken uh, for a copyright issue. <laughs> yeah, I know, bro. Like, do better. You know what I mean? So what's what's the what's the copyright issue? Let me uh, let me look it up. It's a sample. It's a yeah. sample. Um, yep. So, whose song is it though? I'm looking it up right now. Like uh, Paramore. Uh, Juice World lawsuit. Um, no, I know the Lucid Dreams. I know yeah, what song yeah. you're referring to, but what song did he sample? Uh, Sting, oh. fucking Sting. I forget. That's who it is. That's why I couldn't think of it because it's so dude. random, bro. Sting. Yeah. No. <gasps> what is that? The uh, Kiss from a Rose or whatever. Oh, it's Seal. No, it's Sting. Oh, wait. Fuck. Who did? Who did? Kiss oh. from a Rose is Seal. A Seal song. But oh, Sting, I forgot what Sting did. No matter what he did. <laughs> it's fucking sting his pub and his business around his shit to the point where I wouldn't be surprised they've been known like yeah let that shit play go crazy and, and then when it gets to the, and then that shit got to seven million dollars worth they're like give me eighty five percent yeah 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 go yeah, yeah, crazy yeah, yeah. you know and it just sucks it's like yo it make- does suck but I mean you know <coughs> again so what controversy you know you takes the L here drop the project with future. Is streaming crazy right? Yeah And shout out to Paper Frank You know Shout out to Paper Frank Shout out to That uh, that cover is insane so, um, so literally like whew. It's just like It's some You know what I mean It sucks He wasn't getting the money Off of that song right now Anyway It was gonna come next year You know what I mean Right After it all You know I, I don't know I don't know exactly When the song came out I don't wanna you know, speculate too much. Speak on you know another man's pocket because at the same time, that song still has him touring and has him doing all of this other stuff, and that's money off of that. You know, it still has a music video. It still has lucid dreams. It doing the numbers it did still had him looked at in a whole nother light. So at, oh it, well, it set his life up. I mean, I think that he's fine. I think that you know he might have just lost some money, but as long as he still has the idea that like. This is a road bump. Well, yeah, he, Juice World and man, let me just say I heard Future talking about it, and it was Future and Mike Will, and he was just like, man, he pumps these shits out hmm. on the daily. Yeah, no he, problem. I've heard he, he's a real musician. He might not even lead a studio type. He might not even, you know. They say you gotta you gotta pull him out the studio because he's just gonna be in there pumping out hits. And, you know, Future compared him to Sway Lee. And Sway Lee is just the same type of, you know, animal. Gonna have to be on damn every song. Other people want to work with him. And, you know, he can make any situation, like, huge, you know. A huge congratulations to uh, Shrim and Bel Air. Yeah. That's huge, huge. Hell yeah. Um, I don't know if you're a fan of Bel Air, but I told Miles, I said, bro, you got to bring me about three bottles yeah, we do need to have that, huh? We do need I that. I need to design a bottle with them. That's what? No brainer. Go do that, bro. For the, for the hood. The rose. Yeah. Go ahead and do the rose. The or is that rose ratchet would be no. crazy. I gotta just do a. I gotta find the liquor to do. Espalone. There it is. Mmm. Yeah. It manifested. Let's do it. Espalone. Man. Fuck with my boy. Tuki, know the owners, man. Oh, we well need to do up. that for the Super Bowl. Then it's over with. It's over with. What kind of gas you smoking now? Man. I... I got my Uncle Ron and I got Slug. I think those are code names. <laughs> and, you know. I think. They got the best, so mm. that's all I'm going to say on that one. Okay. I know that because 
of their clientele. You know what I mean? Right. Man pulled up with a dispensary in his backpack yesterday. God so, bless, dude. Atlanta's you know, really And changing. that's my OG. That's my OG. I got to get him a hoodie. So mm, Hell yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, I was out in Denver, and that changed my life. It, it changed how I thought about it. Uh, Denver was interesting. I went there one time, too, with think? Shrimp on tour. And you could just buy whatever, and that was cool. You know what I mean? But then also, I flew past it, and it's so windy. The turbulence is so crazy. You had to land somewhere else. Bro, don't and the elevation. Wanna, yeah, I don't really want to fly there again. Do you like flying? I actually don't. I hate it. I, I don't. I think we talked about that before. We did. And when we talked, and I was just saying, like, I don't really enjoy it either. But at the same time, it's just like, I do it. You know what I mean? There's do some you sleep? people who. Can you sleep on a plane? And that's another thing, too. Like, I don't understand how that works now. Like, it's like the older Sleeping? I get, the harder it is to sleep on a plane. You know what I mean? Interesting. Um, But that's why, you know, just be ahead, get the right flight. If I'm on the plane at 6 a.m. in the morning, yeah. I'll probably wake up where I'm going, you know, stay up the night before. That's what I do. You know? For real. Dude, I was, so I got, uh, I was in the airport or whatever, and I have this piece of metal in my body. Yeah. And, uh. Oh, trying to walk through? Bro, they did the whole, they, like, like searched me, like, brought me into the back or whatever. They did the thing where they, like, wipe your hands for, like, bomb material. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm, like, trying to show them, like, yo, I really have some shit fucked right. up. And they're like, no, sir, no, no, no. It's, it's crazy. Like, yeah, that shit will happen. And then, like, I flew through D- D.C. with a joint in my pocket. and Straight? I, just straight through there. And it's just like, it's like. You were straight, though. But I didn't know, though. Like, mm. I didn't know there was a joint in my pocket. Like, it was in, like, my hoodie pocket. You know what I mean? So I didn't know that was there, you know. And it was no problem, you know. And I'm happy because. That could have been a problem. It could have. Know? It's probably, honestly, though, because you didn't know. I didn't have no clue. They right? didn't. They, it didn't look like you were doing anything crazy, probably. I mean, they, they didn't. It didn't. It didn't get there. I kept my hoodie on. They searched me. I came, went in and out. Yeah. In one pocket. Dude, did you hear that at Hartsfield Jackson Airport, we have the largest amount of gun retrievals ever at an airport? Yeah, but that's one of the most busy airports yeah. in the, the country. So, I mean... Of yeah. course. Well, T, you know, T-Pain's whole thing on that was hilarious. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, that man, I forgot how much of a troll he was. Where? T-Pain really is out here doing whatever the fuck T-Pain wants to do. No, for sure. <laughs> for real. I... Um, shit. Okay. Well, guys, listen, this is going to be one of the shortest podcasts we've ever done. But listen, it doesn't matter because I'm excited that we could have just sat here and done this, man. Like, nah, thank for you sure. for taking your time out yeah, and doing man, this podcast. I, again, I got a lot of stuff I, I, I'm doing today. Um, We got to run up. Just to ensure everything's gonna be a one, you know, you gotta be early. So yeah, that's well, the whole thing about it. But um, as again, we I wrap, mean, we'll probably do this again in the uh, annual thing. This is cool, um, yeah. Because I want to like sit them next to each other, and uh, yeah, I mean, is there anything? I mean, we didn't. We just talked, but is there anything that we didn't cover for you specifically that you want to no, talk I mean, about? I just felt like also too, like I got there's an after party at Deep End this weekend. Um, for the release of the bandanas, the new ones, um, multicolor, um, 06, I call it a 06, I think, but yeah, man, these new fondanas I'm about to drop, about to have a after party for it too, and I mean, going to a super tight show tonight, doing the collab there too, so I mean, I just felt like I had a lot of stuff going on, It'd be cool to come talk to somebody about it, and uh, I mean, yeah, this shit's dope. Good, man. I mean, I hope that I did a good enough job covering your collabs and stuff. We didn't really talk. We just talked about life, but. No, nah, it's perfect, though. I felt like it was perfect. This is good, like, good amount of time, and uh, it was perfect. We went over last year, and then we caught up, so. Well, dude, thank you so much for coming, man. It's, I'm excited to see what you have coming, and I'm, as a as a fan and a friend, proud, dude. Appreciate um, it. For real. So, all right, man. Well, hey, this has been Ultralight. Uh, we'll see you guys next week.